Yo guys, what's up? It's Adam here, aka Anti-Cena Guy. And why am I so pissed off? The fact is there's something wrong with my camera again, everybody. And I've got to use this lame webcam on my fucking laptop to do this review. And I did one whole fucking pay-per-view review about Elimination 2024. And then the quality didn't work out. So now I'm going to do the whole thing all over fucking again. So, I'm going to make another attempt at this, but if this doesn't work, fuck it, I'm not going to do it again. You know, I'm just only hoping and praying that this is good quality, so that when I upload this to YouTube, people aren't going to send me in loads of comments saying, what the fuck is your record with you? You know, and all that fucking shit. So, I'm going to give you my final pay-per-view review of Elimination 2024, and if the quality's no good, we'll fuck you. You know, I'm not redoing really the whole fucking thing again. So here we go, Elimination Chamber 2024 review. Uh, just got done watching it moments ago uh, with a couple of friends and we enjoyed the pay-per-view, everybody. I thought it was better than the Royal Rumble, but just like the Royal Rumble, where the fuck was The Rock? <laughs> you know what I mean? We've been having some of these good segments with The Rock and the Bloodline on WWE Raw, you know, Raw tapings and SmackDown. Leading up to pay-per-views, but when it comes to the main pay-per-views, there's no fucking sign of anybody, anybody, you know, so I'm thinking, what the fuck's the whole point of this shit, you know, so uh, there you have it. I suppose that's my only one problem with the show, Elimination Chamber 2024, the fact there was no sign of The Rock. It would have been nice if The Rock would have made an appearance, but I understand he's a busy guy, I know he's got an important role in WWE right now, he's a movie star. The Rock's a very busy guy, you know, I understand that. And even Triple H sent out a message on the internet saying that The Rock's going to be involved with some good upcoming WWE pay-per-views, but Elimination Chamber ain't going to be one of them. So that was indeed a fact. So we're not going to see The Rock at this pay-per-view, which, which was kind of disappointing. But however, in the first match, Becky Lynch defeated Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, Naomi, Raquel Rodriguez and Tiffany. In the uh, Women's Elimination Chamber match. Now, Becky Lynch is the winner. And she's going on to face whoever the winner is between Rhea Ripley and Nia Jax. At WrestleMania for the Women's World Championship. And I'm so happy that Becky Lynch won. Don't get me wrong, I like Bianca Belair. I like Liv Morgan. I love Naomi. I like Raquel Rodriguez. And I like Tiffany. You know, like all the women, they've got nice bodies on them. And nice hot sexy asses and things like that, you know. Etc, etc. But um, I'm glad Becky Lynch won. She was my pick to win. And I'm glad, that, I'm glad I got that prize. Everyone really wanted Liv Morgan to win. And I remember when she got eliminated, you know, a lot of people were pissed off about it. The, the whole arena was booing when she got pinned. You know, I know she's got a big fan base, Liv Morgan, and I'm one of her fans. But it was Becky Lynch's night, so I'm glad that she won. You know, and as for the match itself, it was good for a women's elimination chamber. They changed the design of the elimination chamber again. You know, it looks more gameish like something that you would see in a WWE video game you know the shape of it it looks like all like a tall building you know with the logo in the middle you know and the pods are not glass now they're fucking plastic and all that kind of shit so and I've noticed now there's matting around outside the ring rather than the fucking steel grids you know to protect their bodies you know and things like that but uh it was a fun women's elimination chamber match. A lot of women were doing a lot of hard bumps, you know, a lot of um, unbelievable things. You know, we had a um, we had a move done off top on the, on the pods, you know. Uh, a lot of the women took a lot of hard bumps in this. It wasn't the match of the night, but for an opening match for the pay-per-view, it was somewhat good of a match. You know, I've got no complaints, and like I say, happy for Becky Lynch, so no complaints here. In the next match, Judgment Day defeated the... Um, the new cat, new, new cat Republic, I believe that's what it's called, to retain the Unified Tag Team Championships. And I was so happy when fucking Dominic's mic got cut off, you know, because there was a scene, you know, where Dominic was pulling off a promo, you know, on a mic, and he's, I'm not sure if it was the booing of the crowd that was making his mic sound, sound so quiet, or whether there was something wrong with the mic. You know, he got thrown out, sent to the back during the match because he kept on interfering. Why the fuck do people get beyond this guy, Dominic Mysterio? I mean, I'm not hating on the guy because he's a good heel. I'm fucking hating on the guy because he fucking sucks, you know. He's done nothing impressive in the ring. I don't think he's any good on the mic. That proved it when he did that family segment with his mother. Man, shut up! You know, they tried to make him look like a badass, you know, by coming out 
in a fucking jail, man, you know, at WrestleMania to fight his dad. And in my opinion, this guy can't even hit a great 619, you know what I mean? So he's done nothing impressive in the ring. And, um, you know, it's a shame that he didn't fight Brock Lesnar at Elimination Chamber, you know, because of all the Vince and the man sex scandals. You know, I would love to have seen Brock Lesnar beat the living shit out of Dominic Mysterio, but that's not going to happen now. But, uh, yeah, Dominic Mysterio, I don't like him. I don't think he's any good whatsoever of a WWE superstar. I mean, I know he doesn't matter what I think. I know the guy's going to be a world champion one day. I could see it happening. But in my opinion, the guy's not a good face. He's not a good heel. He's not good on the mic. And I've not seen him do not one great thing in the ring. So... That's just my opinion on Dominic Mysterio. But anyway, this match for the Tag Team Championships, it was a fine match. Um, the um, Those two British guys were like doing some really awesome flips and moves at the start of the match. Um, it, it really picked up towards the end, you know, and uh, it was a good match for the Tag Team Championships. Got no complaints about this match. Good little Tag Team match. And then we get the segment, you know, um, oh, it was... Uh, no, it wasn't Alan. Austin Theory was in this segment. Austin Theory. Somebody else can't remember his name. But then we get Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes coming to the ring to pull off this little, um, you know, this, off, this, off this little segment. And again, no sign of The Rock. It would have been really nice if The Rock was involved in this segment because I was making some insults towards The Rock. Cody Rhodes says he wants a one-on-one -on -one match with The Rock. But then Seth Rollins paused him and says, you can't do that alone. If we're gonna fight, get the rock. We're gonna do it together. You're gonna need some help, you know, some you know some teamwork. So that teases the fact that we're gonna see a tag team match, you know, later on, and that's possibly gonna happen at WrestleMania. Kind of gave it away that these two guys were gonna team up. You know what I mean? Personally, I still would have liked to have seen this the rock, even after everything. I still want to see the rock go one on one with Roman Reigns. You know, I love the fact that the rock is the heel. You know, in all of this, I mean, I love the rock. I love the rock as a heel, but I still would have been even happy if the rock was a face and he was going up against Roman Reigns as the heel. You know what I mean? Everyone online is having loads of mixed emotions about this on Twitter, uh, all over WWE.com about the fact it should be a triple threat match, it should be this, it should be that. But I don't know. There's just so many great things happening right now with the rock. I mean, I'm happy with anything that they're throwing at us. But um, I know I said in my Royal Rumble interview that I wanted the rock to win. But a lot's happened since then. You know, The Rock's come back as a heel. He's joined the bloodline. You know, but this segment was good. But it would have been nicer with The Rock. But like I said, The Rock's a busy guy, you know. So you can understand him missing pay-per-views here and there. You know, but still, it would have been nice to have seen The Rock involved in this segment. Deliver a rock bomb or something. Or accepting the challenge for a tag team match. You know what I mean? So, for a segment, it was okay. I mean, they ended up doing their finisher to... Um, Austin Theory, because Austin Theory was doing some rock impressions. So they hit the finish at Austin Theory, and they both walked out. And nice segment, but again, it would have been even nicer if the Rock and Roman Reigns were involved in this segment, you know. Especially when I was mentioning the Rock a lot. It would have been nice if the Rock would have came out or something. Or even did something on the main title on the screen, you know what I mean? So, But yeah, no sign of the Rock, which fucking sucks. That's the only problem I had with this pay-per-view, no sign of the Rock. And that was a perfect opportunity for the Rock to be involved in like a promo, you know what I mean? But we never got that. In the next match, Drew McIntyre defeated Bobby Lashley, Kevin Owens, LA Knight, Logan Paul, and Randy Orton. And now he's the number one contender for Seth Rollins World Championship at WrestleMania. I've got no problems with Drew McIntyre winning. I mean, I had my money on Randy Orton was going to win this. And there were so many great things happening in this match. I mean, every guy in this match seemed fucked. <laughs> you know what I mean? There was even a, um, a a part where Randy Orton injured his back. You know, a lot of, a lot of Tom during the match, I was wondering, has he really hurt his back? You know, is he faking it or is he really legitimately hurt? And I'm thinking, I hope he's okay. You know, I mean, we get Bobby Lashley spearing, um, doing some spears through the pods. You know, we get Kevin Owens for, for some fucking reason constantly headbutting the pod for Logan Paul. Boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? So, it's a few insane moments. Um, I mean, there was a few um, interruptions, like from um, AJ Styles, you know, AJ Styles, you know, beating the hell out of LA Knight. You know, Randy Orton delivered an RKO to uh, Logan Paul, 
which caused Logan Paul to turn heel, which, which he really was heel in some sort of way. But he used some Braxtonus on Randy Orton, and then he knocked out Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre went for the pin. So Men's Raw Rumble, it was really good. I'd say that was the match of the night, the Men's Raw Rumble. I mean, I'm not putting anything away from the main event, Rhea Ripley and Jack's match. I enjoyed that match. But this had to be the match of the night, you know, the men's elimination chamber, at least in my opinion. There was a lot of hard-hitting moments and heavy bumps, you know, particularly from Randy Orton. You know, we had a spear through the pods, you know, we got a lot of high-flying moves. And I thought it was really well thought through. I was just disappointed that Randy Orton didn't win because if there's any guy who I think deserves to break the six, the um, 16 time championship record, it's Randy Orton. At least that's what I generally think. I mean, I think Randy Orton deserves it. I mean, he's been there one of the longest, you know. He's worked the hardest, so why not let it be Randy Orton? I mean, I don't know. But I'm having Drew McIntyre win. You know, and I suppose it's a nice change that Drew McIntyre is going to be in the main event of WrestleMania. So, got no complaints there. And in the main event for the Women's Championship, Rhea Ripley defeated Nia Jax. And it was a good women's match. Okay, a good women's match. <laughs> We saw Nia Jax giving Rhea Ripley the stink face, you know what I mean? It would have been nice if Rhea Ripley would have turned the favour and got revenge on Nia Jax by doing the stink face, but no, we're not going to get that. And Like I say, she had the hometown advantage because it was in Australia. Her family were at ringside. I mean, it would have been a big kick in the balls if Nia Jax would have won tonight, but uh, that wasn't the case. And we saw some, some pretty good wrestling by both women. I mean, like I say... Um, Nia Jax did a few um, Samoa drops. She put Nia Jax, she put Rhea Ripley through a table. You know, there was a few here and there good moments, you know, within this match. There were a lot of hard-hitting moments. But it was a nice win for Rhea Ripley. You know, she lifted up Nia Jax and hit her finisher. She retained the Women's Championship, and I'm happy for Rhea Ripley. I do like Rhea Ripley. I'm a big fan of hers, and uh, I'm glad that she retained the title. I mean, not putting Nia Jax in. I do like Nia Jax, but Rhea Ripley... Congratulations to her winning in her own town in front of her family, her friends, her fans, you know. So, Mammy won, you know. Overall, a good pay per view, everybody. I mean, I had no major complaints, but then I just wish the Rock would have shown up. It would have been nice if he would have shown up, you know, in that segment, you know, and hit a rock bottom or something, or did something heelish to make the fans hate him even more. I mean, I know they're going back to the 90s vibe, you know, Rocky sucks, Rocky sucks. But at the end of the day, I mean, it would have been nice even if the Tribal Chief, you know, would have made, like, a, a, an appearance tonight. You know what I mean? To help with that little segment, you know, because really it was just like Austin Theory doing all the work. You know, but, um, but um, you know, Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes had their moments, you know, but if The Rock would have been involved in that, it would have been, you know, especially nice. But that's the only downfall of it. No sign of The Rock, you know. But apart from that, impressed with every match. There was not one shit match on the card. I enjoyed every one of them. I thought the men's elimination chamber was the match of the night, you know. But not putting the judgment day down on anyone. One thing I forgot to mention is that Finn Balor injured his thumb in that match, you know. It was like bloody towards the end. It's like, I'm like, fucking hell, he broke his thumb. You know, that's one thing I forgot to mention. You know, the women's elimination chamber match was, was great. I like that one, you know. But, uh... Again, the main event was the women's was the women's match. You know, I'm glad they're doing a lot of stuff with the women now. But uh, overall, fine pay per view. Everybody got no major complaints here. But uh, again, fine. I thought it was way better than the Royal Rumble. Put it that way. The Royal Rumble was a good kick in the balls. You know, I was I was kind of angry that Cody Rhodes won it again for the second year in a row, and I was like, really, <laughs> you know. But anyway, everyone, that's my um, Elimination Chamber 2024 review. Please like and comment and email if you any questions. Thanks for watching this, everyone. Peace out. Peace out. Have a nice day, guys. See you next time. Peace. Hope this works.